right in this video part three to the cryptocurrency chart but this is really geared towards also messing around with the df function the date format i want to take these times that i got from tasker using the percent times global variable in tasker check out part one and part two to this crypto graph to get up to speed there but basically these times are the epoch time and i want to convert these to you know my local time am pm that's how i operate on my time zone am and pm it may be a little bit different for you but i'm going to show you how to do that here but what i have noticed is that kowp will not convert it to the exact time and i'm going to show that to you right here in a second now, up until this point, I know some of you have been asking for the Bitcoin graph. And for those of you with the Tasker files, you've been asking for the Tasker files. Both of these are now available. Tasker files, those of you that have access to that, you know where to find it. And the Bitcoin graph is now available in my free components folder. So since I've been using this test graph, I'm going to go to the test graph component. I'm going to head on over to globals and I'm going to come down to my five text globals that I've called T1, T2, T3, T4, and there is a T5 right there. So I'm inside of the T1 text global and basically I'm broadcasting for that variable that I created in Tasker and I called it T time one or T time two, T time three. We did all of that inside of that loop that we've covered in part one and part two. Now this is returning an epoch time. What I can do with this is I can apply a date format function to this. So I'm gonna do date format. Inside of parentheses, I'm going to return hours, minutes, and I also want to get AM or PM. I'm gonna put a comma after that. And then I'm going to close up this entire thing in parentheses. Now what that just did is in my mind, it took that epoch time and it converted it to hours and minutes. And it's also returning the AM or PM. This is technically a little bit off. If I bring up that epoch time again, before I converted it to hours and minutes and AM or PM, this is the epoch time. And I've also typed that in over here for the epoch time converter as you can see right there. And that converted time is actually, if I think in terms of 12 hour formats, that's three o'clock and two seconds, whereas this shows 2.58. So this is like two minutes off. I, I'm not quite sure why, but it's close enough for me that I'm okay with that. I know that it's pretty much around three o'clock is when this time got converted. And it's not that big of a difference. We're talking about two minutes. It's not like it's hours off or anything like that. And just to verify that, I can also come in here and put my month and my day. So month, May, day, 29th. So notice it is May 29th. And let's also get the weekday up there if you wanted to. I'm not going to put all of this up there. But, you know, hours, minutes, a.m. or p.m., the month, the day, and the day of the week, and I can shorten that day of the week up. But notice everything is matching pretty much with the exception of a few minutes right here. 1500 hours is three o'clock p.m. and that's close enough to three o'clock p.m. to me where I'm not gonna worry about it. If you have a solution as to why it's not returning the exact time that it does convert to, this is something over in KOWP that's not converting it to the exact time. I don't really have an answer here, but again, hopefully it's not too off for you. So with that one converted, we want to come and do the same thing for T2, T3, T4, and T5. Now I know I've not showed you anything else in regards to how to set this stuff up, but I thought it would be worthwhile to make a video alone on using the DF function here. In this case, converting those epoch times. Now we do have our AM and PM times so feel free to check that out, play around with it some more. I wanted to make a video devoted solely to this because this particular topic could help people who aren't even interested in making Bitcoin graphs using the DF function here in this case. So part four will be coming soon where we'll finally look at the design behind this, applying some padding to all this stuff, getting these lines to always work and change dynamically based on the information getting sent over from Tasker. That's gonna be the big video there. So stay tuned to part four. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.